Hi guys, I'm just going to go ahead and start because I don't really have an introduction or anything. So, you know, take some, some quick, easy ones first. I probably, I won't have time to go through all of the questions this one time because it ended up being a lot more than I thought. I was a little bit overwhelmed with, with uh, like 30 different questions. I was expecting, you know, more like five or 10 maybe. So I'm probably going to split this up into two videos, but I'll uh, start with one and, and see how long I go. So first off then, Calvin Borders is asking, where are you from? Apparently someone pointed out that this was, uh, this was asked the last AMA video. I don't even remember that, but yeah, I'm, I'm from Sweden. Then we have, let me see. Um, some of these are troll questions as well. Drifto, nice guy. Uh, he asks me life goals, question mark. It's a bit vague, but uh, I think I, I think I know what you mean. I I don't really know that I have life goals in the sense that you know I've decided a bunch of things that I, I sort of refuse to compromise on. I I want to be happy like everyone else. I'm not really a huge money guy. I, I tend to prioritize having as much spare time as I can rather than making as much money as I can. Um. I think one thing that means a ton to me is to stay outside of social convention and do whatever the fuck I want on my spare time. That's pretty important to me. I, I like doing things that make me happy, even though they're not necessarily what everyone else is doing. I don't want kids, for example. I don't really have a specific career progression or anything that I care about. I've, I've been self-employed my whole adult life, so I for me, it's just a manner of trying to keep that thing sort of staying alive. If I stop doing what I do now, which is photography and, and graphic design mostly, then I would probably go into something like working in a, a larger scale, either photography or videography production studio and just be a tech monkey because the tech has always fascinated me a lot more than, than the creative process. You know, I like them both, just a bit of a, a tech nerd. Um... I would like to move in together with my current girlfriend. It's something that we've been looking at. It's obviously, it's a huge step for both of us because we're kind of naturally like lone wolves, but we both want it. We both have felt for a while that it's something that we really want and really believe in is going to go well. So that would be, that would be a huge one. At some point, uh, there's a couple of, of like trips that I would like to be able to afford. So I would like to go to a couple of different like mountain ranges. I want to see a, a desert. I want to see a, a star spangled sky in the desert. Um, kind of not really that complicated. Um, no epic plans of, of world domination or anything. I, I just want to be happy and, and like trot around in the world and, and enjoy looking at stuff because it's one of the things that I do with my everyday life already, I just want to expand more on that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Bossing progression list. Ah. Um, I don't necessarily think one thing that you learn in PVM is more important than another. I, I think you should probably... Start with something extremely simple like God Wars 2 because they're just DPS dummies and that way you can like use the, the DPS rotation practice to be able to shave the kill time average down and be more efficient with what you're doing and then just apply whatever rotations you bring from that to other PVM. Probably how I would go. Then after that, I would go for the ones that are a little bit more mechanically intense. Probably look at like Nex and Araxor. I would skip Rise of the Six altogether, even though it's at the same tier. It's just horse shit. It's not really PBM. Um, probably go for Raksha at some point because Raksha has really, uh, really forgiving environment to learn prayer switching, which is a very useful skill to have. Raksha and Archglazer both have some degree of this. They're both rather simple to do. It's a one of those probably. And after that, it's really up to whatever you want to do. You know, I'm, I'm a Mostly a solo guy, so I have some stuff that I favor over others, but 
really whatever you're doing is going to inevitably make you better at doing everything else because you bring skills from one place to another. It just, it always works that way. So I can't give you a concrete list really, but I would start with one aspect of PVM, which would be damage, then another, which is, you know, prayer switching. And then I would add them two together and see if I could get better at doing both at the same time. And after that, I would probably start figuring out what exactly it is that I like I'm interested in and work towards that. One place that is probably at the very end of this list, but it's also like extremely good for teaching you essentially everything about PVM is Solak. Ugh. Sorry. Uh, um, yeah, but Solak is a nice combination of, of like improvis of improvisation, of, of prayer management, of trying to reduce the amount of food that you're using, of dealing with a ton of different weapon switches at the same time, and then also adapting to how mechanics in a fight are rolling on. How did you put yourself the witch's eyes for the photo? <laughs> I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I work with photography and graphic design a lot. So I just uh, took a selfie of myself and went into Photoshop and went ham after watching The Witcher season two, because I thought the effect was kind of cool. I'm not going to bore you with the details of exactly how to do it, but it, it really isn't that complicated. How the hell do you sit like that? Your last AMA video. Yeah, I sat with my, <laughs> with my feet up in a... a not kind of, I do that in like a classic monk position. I don't know. I've always been really flexible in my knees. So I sit that when I, I sit like that when I relax in front of the computer most of the time. Uh, no real answer. I can just do it. I always have could. How long did it take you to grow your beard from Brendan Lewicki? I'm pretty sure I touched on this the last time as well. I... I've had a beard in some manner on and off since I was like 16. Um, started growing one to piss my then boss off because I was having like practice or work practice at a design agency working with uh, wristwatches. And at one point he, he disliked my office attire because I didn't really uh, adhere the dress code. So he told me the only thing missing from me is a fucking beard. So I grew one and kept it. But I, I think if I was to shave completely and just start over again, it would, getting to where I, how it looks right now would probably take me like two years ish, give or take. Base, base, base tank. Uh, wonders what is the best clan on RuneScape and why is it Last of PVM? <laughs> so Last of PVM is a, a clan that I was in like seven or something years ago when I first met Base Tank. We became friends through that clan. And then by a series of events, uh, part me and part another person called Damp Cat, we uh, had a bit of a crazy fit, if you will, with one of the leaders and the clan is no more. And I don't think Andy has really forgiven us for it because <laughs> it was excellent. I do agree with you. It was fantastic. GB99 asks, do you have anyone you look up to in the PVM community? And yes. Obviously, I tons of people uh, for different reasons, maybe. And I'm, I've never been like, I, I don't care who has the biggest YouTube channel or who gets the most recognition for something. I don't even necessarily care who is subjectively the best at the game or has the highest leaderboard score on the, the world record sites. I, I, I look up to people because they play the game in a way that I wish I could and that, you know, I admire. Um, couple of examples, I'm not going to name them all because it's going to take a while to sit here and just think through it, but a couple of examples are obviously Base Tank, aforementioned, the guy who just commented, I, I always always appreciated his approach to the game. He's, he's very methodical, he's rather creative, and he also, uh, most of the time it doesn't seem like he actually really cares, <laughs> which I like. I, I like people who don't take shit that seriously, like he's always always trolling himself and others. And he's always been quick to laugh of, over a failure, which I think is cool. Um, so that would be one. I, I admire, uh, there's a streamer called Rainbow that I've always thought was extremely interesting. Rainbow and, and Cini, um, both of them are really fascinating to watch because they're 
barking fucking mad in the best way. They're extremely good at the game. They're extremely good at improvising. And especially they are the kind of players who try something new, going off of essentially nothing. They don't learn it from anyone. And they just, by the looks, at least from my perspective and my skill level, fucking ace it almost right away, which is just disgusting. They're very talented. So them two, are, I, I think they're, those are really cool. I thought Couchy was really cool with this as well. He was also, he didn't necessarily invent stuff. And I think, I didn't really know Couchy personally. I, I think he was more of a like good at repeating something until perfection kind of dude because he was really good at serial difficult inputs and stuff. Uh, so I, thought, I thought Couchy was fun to watch because he, uh, he had this... The set of balls on him, like att- attempting stuff that other people didn't even try because it was just so unlikely or, or so AIDS or so difficult. He sort of he set a new bar in, in ways that I thought was entertaining to watch when he was streaming. I hated his fucking music though. Jesus Christ, dude. Um, another player I think is... is entertaining to see what he's up to is rocket cars he uh, he has a lot of the a lot of stuff i previously mentioned like he's he's kind of mad he's creative and uh, he tends to push stuff further than than at least i could think of doing on my own which is fun um i like finna a lot he's part because he's just a, a genuinely crazy nice guy but also because he's he, he's really good at repeating stuff um, grinding until he gets something off perfect and, and he also has a nice casual mindset to what he does like he's a, a nice dude despite being one of the best best PVMers in the world mm, I think Pup is interesting as well I Pup and I don't really know each other we, we talked a little bit but he's I have no idea how the fuck that guy functions he he's one of those people that for some reason uh, he, he just he puts himself through grinding the most brain dead things you could imagine. Like he writes a rotation that's that has to be tick perfect with twenty five inputs in a row that need to be fucking perfect, and then he just repeats it for forty five hours until he nails it. I, I think that's impressive, and I think it's entertaining to see the result of it. Sometimes when I watch his streams, which I do now and then, I just like, how the fuck do you do this? Because it would just it would drive me mad. I. First of all, I couldn't do it, even if I tried, but like, even if I could do it, no, I wouldn't try because it's just not, I don't know. The patience that guy has is just immense. And that's admirable in my opinion. There's plenty others. My One of my closest game friends, African Herb, is also a really admirable PVMer. He's, he's um, falling into the category of barking fucking mad because he just improvises half the time and he does so better than most people do when they follow a really strict rotation. He's a bit chaotic. Um, he, he dies more than I think anyone in my friend circle. But he's also really fun to watch because he's he's fucking nuts and he's good at adapting to, you know, a surprise circumstance or a, a change in team constellation or whatever. He's really good at improvising in PVM, which I think is one of the coolest, coolest things to be really, really good at. Because that means, in my opinion, that you're truly good at everything, not just one specific thing that you've repeated until you know it extremely well. You know? But yeah, no, there are there are tons of other people. I I don't really want to uh, ramble on for thirty fucking minutes and then try to remember all of them because I'm probably going to forget someone. If I did, I'm sorry. Not that you know, but you know. Um, Rock DD. Asks, what is your opinion on the current state of range style? Do you think T95 range weapons should be added to the game so range can keep up with magic? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes. I think magic is in a really weird state right now because it's just furiously overpowered. But I think rather than gut shooting mage, it would probably be more fun if we could introduce new aspects to make the other two styles as like unpredictable and, and explosive as magic has become. I don't really know specifically what a ranged weapon would be though. 
range already has one of the most interesting special attacks in the game, which is the Eldritch Crossbow. You don't really want to add something like that. I think maybe if range got something that was similar to a CGS effect, where you have like a local area buff that gives you a damage boost for a little while outside of your DS, that would be interesting. Could probably find some some uh, more experimental ammunition types and make it more fun that way. Um, I don't really know. I, I think, sadly, I think the T95 range weapon is going to be a long bow, which, or a short bow, but I, I, I'm i not a fan of that concept. I think arrows are fucking dead on arrival, and as long as they like, don't just straight up make by criminal arrows instead of trying to force these weird other effects, then they're still going to be dead, even if there's a T95 weapon. Uh, but I, I definitely think it should be one, or should have one, but I have no idea what it would really be. Uh, Music Head is asking, what PVM updates and updates in general would you like? Also, what would you change if you could? I mean, since the only content that I'm really interested in is PVM, anything I would like is going to be PVM related. I, I don't really care about anything else. I would... Uh, uh, I would like some of the older bosses to be a little bit rebalanced both in uh, in toughness and in reward towards how the game is functioning today I, one classic example that i've been bitching over for like five years is uh, that old school nex is one of my favorite bosses of all time uh, it's just extremely underwhelming that she has forty thousand life points per face uh, you know when we're doing the fucking disgusting damage stacks that we're doing and the next records are down to like 110 or some shit. So I would rather like, because I, I love next mechanics and I love the way that the arena is designed and how you can use the arena through the fight to uh, to deal with the mechanics. That was one of the most entertaining aspects of next in early EOC. And I think if, if, um, if we could like, I don't know, 5x her HP on every face, so it ended up being 200,000 per face rather and then a, a big sort of haul at the end. And then just like 3x the common drops or something so that, you know, the time spent would be reasonably similar to how it is now, just instead of 20-something kills an hour, you would drop it down to maybe 10. That would have been a lot more fun it would have been a lot more interesting and it would bring like relevance back to uh, a boss that i think was kind of forgotten and shouldn't be because it's a lot of fun so that would have been sick um i uh, uh i think the group modes of elite dungeons could have significantly more aggressive scaling but also uh more aggressive rewards so that group mode would not be something like a, just an easy variant of doing it alone. I think the elite dungeons have a lot to offer. I think they're really entertaining. And I also like the whole gauntlet design. But like blasting through fucking trio runs in seven minutes is just brain dead. It's just click intensive and boring. Um, and I think it would be fun if, because obviously players are so individually powerful now when you get to the end game that I think it could be interesting if maybe they separated Elite Dungeons to a normal and a hard mode with a drop mechanic similar to how they've done with uh, God Wars 3 or Elder God Wars. And then you could have like a trio hard mode that was basically three times uh, normal solo scaling or something, or even worse even, because you can start playing around with the fight design a little bit differently when you're in a group situation. I think that could be really interesting. I would like Melee to get some manner of a Dren source. I think everyone wants this at this point. My personal suggestion has, has like as long as this conversation has gone on, I think Melee should have something like a Meteor Strike effect that runs passively in the background as long as you have bleeds active on the target. Because that would combine the effect of, of the bleed prodding and, and bleed whoring that you have from like Masterwork Spear and launching and... and uh, the ECK spec, everything that bleeds, bleeds are a really big part of melee and, and having bleeds be functionally rewarding in terms of giving you a dren that you can dump with the other big hits like your, your thresholds and your overpowers and, and uh, maybe a changed variant of the Meteor Strike ult if you remove the uh, 
remove the ultimate, that would be really interesting because then you would use the bleeds to gain adrenaline, you would use everything else to dump adrenaline back in. And, and melee would be much more unpredictable, much more dynamic, much more entertaining, and it would get its teeth back, kind of. And that would be really cool. Mm. I don't know if I want planted feet back for melee. It was originally, uh, I don't know if it was intended or not, but originally planted feet did work for melee. You got 28 seconds circ, whatever it was, 26 or something. That could probably be something, but I, I don't really know. I think the the bleed thing would be more than enough, and that would just change the way that melee works and make it as entertaining as the others. I would personally love that. Anyway. Um, I would also like some of the some of the group encounters to be scaled down a little bit. I would like a, a third raids boss because I think raids has something that could be a little bit less cancer than what it is today. I think the once every other day lock is fucking ridiculous. Should be just straight up removed. I think they should scale it back from 10 man to maybe like 5 man or something so that it becomes a little bit more challenging. Uh, and then uh, a third boss that I have no idea what that would be. That would just make raids another activity that would be kind of fun to do, I guess. Um, I think Suck should have a duo option. I know this is weird because it's not necessarily the most difficult fight it's just it's brain that fucking boring in my opinion anyway but it also has a lot of elements that would be really interesting to split up between two players like if you cover different areas of the map at the same time or you focus on different uh different class enemies or you you prep for the challenges together in a like a joint series of, of uh, rotations or just everything would be more interesting if you had another player to do it with i think so that would be really cool I don't really know how it would end up working out because I haven't thought it through a ton. I just, oh, sorry. It's just uh, one of those things that when I did suck what little I have done, I, I felt like the thing that made it so incredibly boring was but the spawn times of just waiting for shit and, and also the fact that I was doing it alone. Hmm. I would like Solak to get an official solo mode. That would be sick. I don't even care if it's incredibly difficult. I just hate that you can't go in alone and spawn a duo spawn and try. I don't know why the fuck you wouldn't be allowed to just try. You know, if, you, if you're dumb enough to try it, then why not just let us? Um, I could think of more things, but those are the ones that come to mind. What do we have here? Are you into Viking mythology? Because you do seem so, uh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm a Scandinavian, so I've been taught some Viking mythology in school. My my, my uh, granddad read me some fairy tale books that were based off of my Viking mythology when I was a kid. My cousins were pretty interested in it, so they taught me a bunch of shit. It's just, um, some of it just exists sort of around you. Um, I'm by no means... Religiously, religiously nor culturally interested in almost anything. I, I think mythology and fairy tales can be cool because I like fantasy, but not to the extent where I care about what people really did. I care more about the way they describe things, the, the pictures they paint by making up these, these elaborate metaphors for stuff that could still be relevant today. I, within Viking mythology, I think the thing that I'm the most fond of is probably the Tree of Life or Yggdrasil. I think it's a, a beautiful way to depict a theorem of different worlds or different realms. Uh, mostly just because it's, you know, it has fairy tale stuff all over it. It's one of those things that whenever it's imitated or like depicted or brought up in a movie or a you know, fucking stone carving or a tattoo or something, it, it tends to tends to look nice and there's something about it that attracts me. Um, do you prefer group or solo bossing? I, it depends on the group. I, big surprise, right? No, but I, I like doing group PVM with my friends. I like doing solo PVM when they're not on. I don't necessarily enjoy doing group PVM with strangers because I think the RS community and I don't always get along. <laughs> um, I don't 
love to be competitive all the time. I think like measuring dicks and giving each other shit between friends is really entertaining, but I don't like when it turns into a, a toxic sort of pressure situation because I don't want to treat this game like it's a fucking job. I want to come home and, and relax. You know? How do you from, sorry, uh, Beep is asking me, how do you combine RS with your real life? Like, what is it to you? Is it more than just a video game? Or do you only play on your free time or is it bigger than that to you? I, I mean, gaming in general is one of my favorite things to do. RS is by far the game that takes the most out of my free time. It does come and go in waves. Like it could take a year off now and then, but I wouldn't say it's, I mean, the game itself is not necessarily more to me, but it does become more to me because I meet friends throughout the game that keep me company through my work days. Like I work over here. This is my actual workstation where I also have games. I sit in the same corner of my house for most of my waking hours. And um, some of these people, you know, after you know them for enough time and you get close, you start caring about them like they were anyone else, regardless of where they come from. So of course I've, I've met people through the game that are really important to me. Um, connecting with these people and, and like socially evolving through the interactions with them, that's really important to me. That means something. It makes me grow as a person, I think. I, I wouldn't necessarily attribute everything to specifically RuneScape, but RuneScape did become the vessel that brought this to me. So it kind of, it depends how you see it. You know, it could theoretically, theoretically be any other game as well. But RS is the one that I've stuck with. I, I like it. I have no plans to stop playing right now. Um, I think it's just um, like any other hobby, except it houses in, in a pixel format rather than being a football, you know? Uh, uh, uh. If you had to, this is from Jero and Speakerman. I am shit at Dutch. I'm sorry, mate. If you had to choose, never a personal best or world record or no tutorial video, what would, what would your choice be? Like, which would you, uh, which would I never do again? If I had to remove one of them, guessing uh, <laughs> i i don't really know man i think chasing my own pbs is fun but i think the videos that i enjoy making the most are probably the tutorial ones so i think if i had to uh, if i had to kill one of them it would be the personal records and and uh, the few world records that i've been nosing in on i would just stick to doing only the tutorials because i think that process is more entertaining Jack Miao, do you see yourself still playing RS in two years, in five years, and ten? Do you see yourself playing until the servers are shut down? Personally, I am 20 years in already, and I'll most likely play until the servers are shut down. I have no idea, dude. It really depends on how my life changes and whether or not I end up in a situation that allows me this much free time and, and like this kind of relaxed work format that I have right now where I can AFK stuff during my work hours. I have no intent on leaving the game. I haven't really thought about it. I mean, obviously it would be a sad day if the service shut down because I wouldn't know what the fuck to do with five hours a day of my life, but I would figure it out. I'd just do something else. I can absolutely see myself continuing to play for the coming like two to five years. I have no idea in 10, I, you know, from a decade from now, my life might look entirely different. I might have a different job. I might be more interested in doing stuff that's related to that job, but I don't really know. Right now I'm uh, hired for a position that I really enjoy and one that I think was kind of a, a, a universe gift, if you will, if you're uh, one of those people. I don't want to give it up. I don't want to change it for anything because it's giving me a life that I think is very difficult to obtain through most other lines of work. So I, I will definitely carry on doing that for as long as I can. And one of the perks that comes with that is that I have a ton of time to game and I will probably spend most of that time playing RS because as long as the game doesn't drastically change, I, 
I have my, my little circle of friends. Most of them are still around. Um, I still enjoy playing the game almost every day. So two to five years, yeah, sure. Ten years, I have no idea. Logic RS asks, why is your voice so soothing? It's like if Bob Ross, David Attenborough, and Mr. Rogers had a child. That is a fucking horrible thought. Man needs to record an audiobook. I do not need to record an audiobook. <laughs> I have been requested to do so. Um, but I, I don't know. It would be difficult. It would actually be kind of fun as well, but I think it would be difficult because I'm... I'm not great at reading and talking at the same time, so I'd probably have to repeat every paragraph of that book like three times until I got it right, which would be annoying. But I have no idea. My voice is different in English than it is in Swedish because when I speak English, I relax my throat a little bit more and I, I, I don't know what the word for it is. Um, a, a friend of mine was dating a vocal coach for a while and, and she commented on my voice in one of my videos and said something about it that I'm using a particular part of my throat to speak or like push air out. And I, I don't know what the word of that was, but it's something about the way I'm relaxing and I'm, I'm uh, not passing a lot of air through my nose, which makes my voice kind of like soft and a little bit darker when I speak English. Peter Kirk is asking me something that's also really huge. Five changes you'd most like to see made to combat in RS. But I might wait a second. I'm gonna... No, I have time. Okay, cool. Um, five changes. Shit. I mean, that would be the Melia Dren thing that I spoke about earlier. It would also be the revamping old bosses to make them relevant, giving them more HP. I would like runecrafting to have an actual purpose. Um, I would like runecrafting to be able to imbue magical properties into certain items, kind of similar to perks, but through the runecrafting skill. I would like to be able to create combination runes that are designed to one slot an entire spell, like you just you fuse the runes together with some second party energy to make uh, another a new resource that would allow you one cast of whatever the fuck it may be. Um, like Inside Fear or Exsanguinate or Smoke Cloud or whatever. That would be really interesting. I, um, <sighs> five things is a lot, man. Just, just, you could either say like three that you really care about or you could say 25 if you just sit there and think about it for a long enough time. Uh, I would like to see an expansion of at least one or two other skills to the 120 stage and i would hope to see something similar to the herb lore and uh, farming expansion where there was a lot of, of uh, game-wide supplies being introduced because of that that would be really interesting i think a 120 summoning would be really fun i also think that something like crafting room crafting or divination could probably be combined to uh, to fuck with you know, magical properties of accessories or armor or, or weapons or whatever it may be, that would be cool. Um, I like the idea of probably expanding prayer to 120. I have no idea what I would add because it's really complicated, but that would that would be one of the things that could be really interesting. I don't know. I don't really know if that was five, but that's all you're going to get. Um, <laughs> sorry, bro. So this this guy. Coco Pops is asking me, what is your most and least favorite thing about the combat system? If you could improve one thing, what would it be? My most favorite thing about the combat system is dynamic adrenaline, 100%. That is such a huge leap forward in combat technology for the game, and it made everything so much more fun. The one thing I would change would probably be adding dynamic adre adrenaline by some mana to melee. Uh, I would also like to completely remove anything that has to do with auto attacks because I think the auto attack interaction system with abilities is a fucking dinosaur that just needs to go. It's useful for some stuff, but it's just it's just illogical and aids and stupid, and I would like it completely removed. I hope that answers your question. See what else we have. We have Drew who's asking, 
have you finished evolving as a PBM or, or what do you feel you still have left to do? I mean, I finished evolving with the fuck was that? Sorry. Finished evolving would mean that it would mean one of two things. It kind of depends on how you interpret the, the constitution of that, I guess. One of which would be that I would be complete and that there would be nothing left for me to learn. That is absolutely not the case. I don't think that's the case for anyone. Um, the other one would be that I cannot really progress further than what I already have because of myself, really. Like, this is sort of as, as good as it's going to get. I could kind of see that. I think I learn small details now and then, and I have random ideas that make me tackle a problem or a rotation design or a fight design or whatever in a different way. So I'm probably not going to be like repeating the same shit that I already do for the coming year or something. Um, but I don't think I'm going to get much better in terms of my day-to-day -day PVM performance compared to other players because the things that limit me right now are not really... It's not really the creativity. It's not that I don't know what to do. It's that I am unable to do it. And PVM gets to a complexity level where it's more difficult to actually perform the ideas that you have than making up the ideas in the first place. At least for me, that's that's what's holding me back, and I don't think that's going to change because I'm, uh, you know, I'm not getting any younger and I'm not getting any smarter, probably. So I think I am where I will continue to be, but I don't think I will do exactly the same shit that I already do for that much longer. I think it will change as it always does. Forever Alpha is asking me, do you use any beard products? I've been wanting to commit to getting the length of yours, but I'm curious to know the care you use for it. Uh, that's an easy one. I don't. I use like regular hair shampoo and shit to just keep it clean because it starts itching otherwise, which is really annoying. Uh, some rare occasions, maybe I use some kind of like hair wax or, or a little bit of beard oil or whatever to like shape it and just make it look slightly less bushy but i don't really i'm not really a you know i don't have a fucking beard care routine or something i don't spend 75 bucks a week on beard wax that was made from some sacred honey whatever shit i'm not really into all that i don't even go to a you know barbershop place i just whenever i think it's getting too long i just trim it and freestyle so i can't really help you there um the only thing I can say is the itching never stops. Have fun with that. So William the Fourth or William IV, depending on if you want to be a royalty or an intravenous contraption. How many total hours do you have on RS3? How do you feel about that number? And do you think the game has changed anything about you as a person? Thanks, man. Love the bits. Thanks, William. I appreciate it. I have somewhere in the neighborhood of 24,000 hours on my current account. I have another, whatever it may be, you know, a couple of years of gameplay prior to that because I've had a, an, another, an older account. I could have obviously spent that time doing stuff that would probably like long-term in my life be more productive. I, I feel like 24,000 hours is probably enough for a fucking doctorate's degree in something, but I, at the same time, that's never really been what I wanted. I wanted to play runescape so i, I felt like it's twenty four thousand hours well spent because i've had fun along the way um, i don't necessarily feel anything about it i think if i wanted to do something else i would because i'm a kind of stubborn person so it doesn't bug me i haven't really used rs as a you know as an escape to avoid dealing with other stuff uh, it's just a way for me to pass my spare time and as long as it keeps bringing me some manner of joy and makes me happy while using it, then obviously um, I would happily spend another 24,000 hours on it. Uh, has the game changed anything about you as a person? I speak a little bit better English than I probably would if it wasn't for RuneScape, I guess. I've um, 
gotten to know people that I never would if it wasn't for RuneScape. They've taught me things and made me see life differently. So that's kind of attributed to the game, I guess. I would probably, and this is kind of a big one, I think, I would probably, probably not have such an easy time accepting that I'm a massive lone wolf nerd, just hermit fuck that likes to be left alone and, and fiddle with technology or play a game or you know, drown into a fantasy something piece of content. If it wasn't for RS, because it was one of the one of the first environments that I spent a significant amount of time in where that kind of that kind of lifestyle was was encouraged rather than discouraged, which is which is kind of it, it kind of is if you look at the rest of the rest of society. Yeah, that's not really fair because it's not just the gaming community that accepts people being nerdy, but like it's one of those things that you need to try to understand if you really love it. And RS gave me uh, a reason to look more towards that side of myself, which I guess changed a significant portion of who I am. Fuel Scenes is asking me, when did you experience your breakthrough moment concerning getting serious about PVM? Uh, what did it look like? What wisdom or advice would you pass on to someone looking to follow in your footsteps? Ah, <laughs> I feel like a Greek fucking oracle sitting on a mountaintop somewhere with this, some some 19-year-old looking at me with a blood offering. That's not really the case. I'm a, a random dude. I think probably the thing that made me take the combat system seriously was when uh, EOC was introduced, there was a fairly competitive scene around Nex because she was one of the highest tier bosses at the time, Nex, Calfoy King and Virago. And Nex was the one that I sunk into and competitive Nexing became uh, a sub-community of sorts. It was, in my opinion, really entertaining and getting better at beating the other people in, in FFA kills. Like, it's what we what people did was Next didn't really have an instance at the time, so there was just the public spawn. And the public spawn works the way that whoever does the most damage gets the drop in the end, and it would give you an XP drop that was in proportion to how much damage you dealt. So we would compete with each other to see who got the highest XP drop and thereby who got the drops. That was one of the things that made me, or probably the first thing that made me really like try to improve at what I was doing and try to understand the game better so that I could get better at that. Uh, other than that, I think a lot of it is just uh, a natural product of me being part curious, um, part creative, and, and part a fan of optimizing shit around me. I like to leave something better than when I found it. And I also like to look at a system, a puzzle or a function and improve its efficiency in some way or change it to a, a structure that I think makes more sense. And then try and see if that improves on the original function and the combat system does kind of allow me to do that, which is one of the things that I enjoy most about it. Well, I don't think I have a breakthrough moment or anything. I don't really think I... Uh, I don't think I have <laughs> ascended particularly highly either. I, I spend a lot of time doing this. I'm, I'm fairly rich in the game, so it allows me to do whatever the hell I want. And, you know, enough hours, you're kind of inevitable, inevitable to improve, I guess. But yeah, I would say that probably the defining step along the way, if I was to pick one, was probably competitive next, somewhere in the like 2013, 2014 area, thereabouts. Andrew Lawson Blake, did you take any approach in particular in the process of going from average at PVM to exceptional? Was it hard to defeat the plateaus that we all experience along the way? I mean, this is basically just a, another chapter of the previous question. I, I mean, I haven't done anything specific. I've just, I've now and then when I feel like I hit a wall and nothing is interesting anymore, I just pick a random project that I haven't done before and I try to ace it. So the last one I did was Carapac, for example. I hadn't done Carapac. I thought it was weird. I, I wasn't a huge fan of the design. I, I thought it was a little bit too difficult to start learning. And then at one point when I was also learning magic, I just figured, fuck it, this is the day. 
so I started grinding it until I progressively got got better. And you know, after a while, I, I was doing okay. I'm still not doing amazing, but I am doing significantly better than I was when I started. I started out doing six and a half minute kills, completely fucking confused about everything, and now I'm down to like three forties, which I think is all right enough. Raksha was another one of those, but Raksha was also because I thought it was pretty fun when it was released. It was cool to throw in the prayer switching element of it. Um, buying into magic and just like, okay, I'm just going to do mage now because that's the one thing I haven't done in five years. That would be fun. That was another one. I just, I tend to try to shake everything up because whenever you do, you learn something new and you bring that into other PVM and you just like, you progressively um, expand your insights by exposing yourself to new puzzles to solve kind of like anything else in, in life, you know. Becky C. Oh, this is pretty much the same question, I think. Um, what do you remember being a big moment towards the start of your PVM? And how does that compare to where you are now? Do you ever think about how excited you were getting your first ED1 run compared to chasing that extra second or two in a PR run? Yeah, that's that, this is an interesting thing because like the excitement doesn't really go away. It just it changes and it becomes a little bit more seldom as you raise the bar for yourself. Like the first time I was doing ED1, for example, ED1 is a good example because it's one of the things that I've done the most. Um, first time I was doing ED1, I was hauling ass through like a 50 minute run. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I, uh, I think I f four cycled Serio in some like 15 minutes, whatever, about a really, really disgustingly long time. Um, I was mostly happy about being faced with a challenge or a boss and figuring out how to do it and then you know, the next step was how to do it better. And they're both sort of equally, equally satisfying. Obviously, uh, it's a little bit more exciting to learn something completely new than it is to shave one second off of something you've done 1600 times. But at the same time, like pushing the boundary of what you can do with it and changing the way you tackle the same, the same problem with new solutions is also really entertaining. And doing something that ends up being better than you thought it could be or like better than most other players is also a really nice feeling. So they're both really cool. Moment that I remember would probably be my first one cycle. I was sick. I was really fucking proud of that. Only a handful of other people had done it at the time. It was at the time a lot more prestigious than it is now. It was one of those things that I was trying to do for a significant amount of hours. And one of those, it just felt like a, a feather in my hat, you know? It also didn't hurt that the timer was exactly on par with Couch's timer when he did the first one cycle ever. But at the same time, I mean, it was like a year of power creep later. So I'm not really going to compare it to what Couch did because that was fucked. <laughs> um, first time I broke a world record was also pretty fun. That was the same story, pretty much. That was also Couch's old world record at Black like, Stone Dragon. I managed to break that, but after like a year and a half of updates, because no one else had tried. Um, so it wasn't really that I did anything that no one else could do. I was just the only guy who did it. But it was, it, I mean, still, it was just, it made me happy because it sparked a bunch of other people to look at what I did and do it better. And it, was, it started to like it sort of breathe a bit of life back into that boss as a world record scene and that was really cool a lot of really cool pvm has come out of it don't really know defining moments that's fucking that's difficult i a lot of stuff is significant i mean my first solar kill was cool um i didn't really understand anything but that was I, that was also one of the, like i knew on day one that this is something that i'm going to be doing a lot of that i thought was really sick um it was also kind of fun when, even though I don't necessarily, like, I have no goals in making this YouTube channel grow large or, you know, make me money or anything, but it was pretty cool when PVME used one of my or two of my uh, ability rotation guides and they exploded in views and, and started growing the channel and it passed like 20,000 views or something. That was, that made me happy. Because it just, I don't know, it was nice to... Obviously the recognition is nice, but the recognition is also 
I mean, it doesn't really matter. But it was really nice to see people gaining something from time that I put into making a tutorial or a video. Uh, I love seeing someone that I teach a boss get good at the boss. Or, you know, if I teach someone to do something or teach someone PVM, I love seeing them get rich and progress better. And maybe, you know, in the end, even teach me a thing or two, which has happened several times. Um, I think those would probably be it. I was one of the earlier people to do consistent next soloing in the very early EOC as well. That was pretty cool. That was one of the first people to be able to do next solo without food, or at least to, you know, do it once. Um, I've made up rotations that ended up being world record worthy. Um, in some cases I haven't been able to perform them myself, so I left them to my friends who are much better players than I am. But those, those things are cool, I guess. Um, Fat Kes, he asked me this in game, but I promised to save it for the, for the, uh, AMA is, uh, what is your favorite personal best have you done at any boss? I'm probably going to refer back to the Serio one cycle, the first one. That one or my last 145 Serio, that felt really good. Uh, my 103 Terracat that I did the other day, that was also at a level that was higher than I expected from myself. So I think those two kills are um, also something to be proud of right now anyway, because they're better than I thought I could do. Mm. I think that's it. So, oh. when I mean, you like any PR most of the time, not all of them, but like you, most of the time you think it's fun to break a record. Some just end up meaning a little bit more than others, or they end up being better than you, better than you expected, and that's even more fun. Uh, so Chris98, he asks me, do you watch any Twitch streamers? You can name any, RuneScape 3, OSRS, just chatting, any. And what do you like in their streams? I watch fairly few people on Twitch. I think Twitch is a infested fucking cesspool of just the worst that humankind has to exhibit. I think RuneScape is such a small category that it obviously isn't as bad as the just chatting categories or whatever, but I, I watch Base Tank whenever he streams. I always have as every, like every time he has had more streaming intense periods. I've pretty much had it on as background noise because I like like watching what he does. I, I like his sense of humor. I think he's a really entertaining person and I, the PBM quality is obviously very high most of the time, so that's cool. I, I watch Finna and Pup whenever they stream. Not Pup always because he streams a lot and sometimes it's, it's a very grindy stuff that takes a long time of repeating the same thing, which just, I don't know, it, it tires me out because I don't understand the game to the extent that he does and you know not knowing exactly what's going on makes it less entertaining to watch Fina streams are nice because uh, even though I can't really relate to that kind of the, the quality of PVM that he delivers sometimes so I, I still think most of the stuff that he does is fairly entertaining and like relatable um I watch Rainbow whenever he streams or she. I don't really know Rainbow. Um, same reason as Sini, because they're both extremely like just fucking crazy, really, in a nice way and very entertaining to watch because they're so good at what they're doing and they're really good at bringing new ideas, new rotations and, and, and like experimental stuff into the game that I've never seen before. And I think that's really fun to watch. I used to watch Couchy now and then, um, not always, but sometimes. Can't really think of any others. I used to watch Wassy a bit, but then when he started his Iron Man account, I don't really care anymore because Iron Man content is mostly something I can't relate to. Uh, I think Wassy is also really, he, he's really good at engaging with his audience. He really understands how to make an entertaining stream last for a long time, um, but the Iron Man content doesn't doesn't interest me as much. I think that's it. Those are all of the questions, or at least most of them. I skipped one or two, either because they were like just troll questions or because they were uninteresting. Um, whatever I did skip, I'm going to answer in text on the YouTube community page. And thanks everyone for submitting these questions and helping me do this. This was fun. 
I was weirdly uncomfortable around making this video compared to the other time. I was nervous last time as well, but this time I, I, I don't know, it just, I struggled to get going with it. I was staring at my camera settings for like an hour and a half, just like, how the fuck am I even going to do this? And then after a while I realized, fuck it, no one cares. So I just did it and it was fun. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone. And thanks for watching if you <laughs> stuck with me this far, I guess. Uh, have a nice day.